Witam Was kochani bardzo serdecznie. Dzisiaj jest ze mną Nandini. Jest to żona, kuzyna Waruna. Wiem, trochę skomplikowane, ale ten odcinek powstaje dzisiaj z tego względu, że było bardzo dużo pytań na Instagramie odnośnie bardzo ważnego tematu. Tak mi się wydaje. Szczególnie, że jestem na takim etapie życia, że za chwilę będę tego doświadczać i dzisiaj porozmawiamy sobie o połogu w Azji, a dokładnie w kulturze indyjskiej. Jako, że mój partner pochodzi z Indii, to będziemy rozmawiać na ten temat. Dzisiaj zadam Nandini kilka pytań, moim zdaniem dosyć istotnych, z perspektywy osoby, która pochodzi z tej kultury. So today I will start with a question. Can you imagine that uh, during this uh, period of time when you deliver the baby, you are alone? Like you want to do everything by yourself, you don't want to involve anyone. Because as I told you before, in my culture, some of the girls um, and some of the couples, they would like to be only, uh, you know, for themselves. That this time nobody is it. They have only own time. They um, learning new things about the baby, how to become these parents, how to feed, how to do many things. Mm. So tell me, can you imagine that you are doing this, you know, alone, without your family, without your mom, without your, um, you know, cousins and all people who will be coming and welcoming your baby? So, uh, <clears throat> from my personal experience, I would like to say that I cannot imagine being alone in this postpartum days after delivery because first of all you are at your most vulnerable state physically, mentally, emotionally, hormonally from every perspective you are so vulnerable you are recovering even if you had a very easy birth even if you had a very traumatic birth experience so I can't personally imagine doing it alone so I had my family with me uh, I uh, I went to my uh, my own house after the delivery, after I got discharged from the hospital. I went to my place. I had my mom with me. She was doing all the sorts of things. Uh, uh, and I had one massage lady who, who used to come to do massage for me and the baby. And my father was also there. He used to do his own bit uh, regarding, you know, if uh, he's playing with the baby when he's awake or maybe the burping the baby when you feed the baby mm -hmm. after that you have to have to have to bur burp the baby every time every single time after the feeding yes. so uh, there are a lot of more things you know like changing diapers and even when the baby is not uh, with a diaper you have to keep the baby without the diaper also for yeah, few because, hours because yeah. in, in, especially in India because of yeah. different climate yeah and the thing we use is the langot it's the it's the cloth we make of you know uh, cotton uh, this garment and then the langot we put langot on babies instead of putting the diapers mm -hmm. so it's a lot of you know hundreds of things when it comes uh, you know for the baby there are hundreds of things so you cannot do it alone I mean as I'm saying there are people who do it that's why I was telling you that sometimes it's not even because someone doesn't want help there is not possible that your her mom or his mm. mom will come mm. or parents or whoever because uh, they working they have mm. a lot of things to do mm. but um, when i did this q and day the ladies told me some of them mm. they are not happy at all mm. to be alone because the depression because yeah. of a lot of you know this hormonal changes as you said um it's for them very traumatic sometimes because of delivery delivery was not according the plan or something scared them so yes i was thinking like how the family member helps you and what was your experience regarding that like what for example your parents were doing or the parents of your husband but yeah i wanted to know so for example you had time to recover you mm. could you could take a rest you could sleep right take a nap so your parents put in mm. this time you know, do something with the baby, mm. uh, feed or whatever mm. at night. Mm. How was it? So I think the first thing you should keep in mind is that while you are pregnant, what kind of a mental state you are in. Uh, you know, for me, I had a planned pregnancy. So I already had this mental setup in my mind that I will go to my parents' house and they will help me in whatever ways they can. 
and I will have I will have other help also. Maybe from my in-laws. Maybe they will up they will move in, move out, whatever. I will have my husband with me, and I will have this massage lady. And you know, I had this mental setup that I will have people around me. So it works like that. But always, always yeah. But yeah. always in India, like most of the time, the mm. parents are with you. They always yes. take yes take in care. In India, of the grandparents are. You know they are so excited for the grandkid. Even when you get married, they will be like, "We are here for you. You just, you just get pregnant and you give us the baby. And we, yeah, will, be, yeah, no. we will be helping you throughout, and we will take care of the baby. You go, you have fun with your life, and you travel. We don't care. You just go and give us the baby, and we are happy <laughs> with them. So they have this mindset that you know, you just give us the baby, and we will take care of the baby. <laughs> no matter boy girl whatever just go and have fun so they are always like this in the, in, the, in india the grandparents are like this only we i don't think i have ever thought any grandparent in india who is like we don't want to get involved with you and so, so just take care sorry of to disturb you so what i yeah. wanted to point it out in my culture um, there is also pressure in the society okay yeah. you know you should have a kid <coughs> you should do this you should do like this but when the kid comes or is sick or there is any issue or mm. whatever, suddenly they will just come take a picture. They, I'm not saying every family, right? They, there are families who mm. care, mm. but uh, there are situations many times where, oh, you know, you should have a kid. So, you know, people, they are sometimes under this pressure. They will, mm. okay, they will make a kid, but then they realize, you know, they are hit the reality mm. and nobody is there. So, okay, they, I, I'm not saying that parents have any responsibility, mm -hmm. no, because at the end the final responsibility is from the parents' side, but, uh, you know, at the end you wanted so much, you were mm -hmm. telling me you wanted to have uh, grandchildren, but at the end you don't want to even stay with them, you don't want to be involved, you're just pretending to be, you know, like, seasonal grandparents and that's it. No, no, it's not like that in India. They are always involved from the... And they will help you. Know. Yeah, they will help. The, you know, the help, this thing can be uh, different for the mother or the mother-in-law and can, it, will, it, will, it can be different for the father or the father-in-law. So, after you uh, deliver the baby, the mother, she needs a lot of privacy because now she has to breastfeed. Yes. If she's choosing to breastfeed, she needs a lot of privacy. The fathers, the men of the family, so they can't come them. in the room just like that. You know, it's not that simple. So when I uh, delivered my baby, I felt this thing that I needed. I never expected that I, I would be needing so much of privacy because the baby, he's hungry after every few minutes, after, after every half an hour or after every hour. So you have to be like ready, you have to just uh, do the breastfeeding after every hour. So you can't expect anybody to come in and out. So mm -hmm. in that case, what happens that the mothers or the female figures of the family, they can do all the things regarding when, you know, giving you food or preparing food for you or maybe if you need anything while you are breastfeeding while you are resting with the baby or these kind of maybe giving the massages and all if you are not hiring a massage lady uh, but for the father figures what they can do is maybe they can help uh, they can play with the kid while he's awake or maybe burping the baby after the feeding or uh, maybe so, changing the diapers and all if you need anything from outside, maybe from the market, if you need anything, they can help you with that. So the the work it gets divided, but uh, they all the yeah, they all, yeah, 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 yeah. They all can help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you tell me about the Shantala massage? I'm talking about the massage which is given to uh, the baby and the uh, mother. Mm -hmm. How does it help to recover? Um, what is exactly made? Because you know, for some people, they say, oh you know like massage especially during the pregnancy mm -hmm. uh, some of the people they believe no no it shouldn't be done mm -hmm. but in india you do from like the stage of the pregnancy mm -hmm. until the postpartum yeah. so i was thinking like how does it help in to recover according to you i can tell because i feel yeah. now yeah. but what is uh, what you guys uh, thinking mm -hmm. about it like because this idea came from mm -hmm. asia this massage and all therapies so in India, we appreciate, we support, we accept massages and uh, you know, even during the pregnancy and especially after the pregnancy when you deliver the baby. So the uh, women's body, 
it starts from zero again after the delivery basically every nutrition you had in your body it's gone after the baby so you are starting your life your journey again from zero you are rebuilding your body from zero again so you need a lot of nutrition you need a lot of good massage and um, even for the baby the baby is so fragile when he is born the baby is so uh, the muscles are not build up the, the joints. yeah the joints the bones so it's in a very fragile position so when you give massages the massage lady she is professional we call her the japa lady so she <clears throat> she gets involved in every kind her job is to give the mother as much as rest as possible so what she does is she gives ma massages to the baby when in the morning preferably in the morning mm -hmm. in the morning time so uh, she will put some nice oil we prefer uh, badam uh, the almond oil the for hair yeah it's the badam rogan oil for hair and uh, for the body it maybe it depends it's winter what season it's in so maybe the coconut virgin oil maybe the olive oil maybe the um, sarso tel the uh, what do you call it the sea salt oil sea so oil. yeah mustard oil so uh, they will apply this oil and they will give good massage to the babies and you have to be very gentle not everybody knows how to give a massage to the baby yes, because she is qualified yes yes massage. you can't you think that you can give the massage but you cannot yeah. because the baby uh, the baby uh, the neck support is not there they are so fragile you just can't you can't do just anything so you need a professional help you need massages and the grandmothers of uh, in india they they are sort of professional because they have they given massages yes. yes they have given massages to all of their grandkids they have seen their mothers giving massages so it's so, like a generation yeah yes even i saw my mother giving massage i saw the massage lady giving massage i had now some sort of experience in giving massages so now my son is uh, one year more than one year old i give him the massage i know how to do it initially i was not in a very you know good physical state that i can give him the massage because initially the massage you need a lot of body strength for it and initially i i was my i was recovering myself so i cannot i do not i did not have that strength to give him the massage so <clears throat> the massage it happens in such way that uh, the massage lady she does this and the question will be um is that true about the nappies some of the family they don't uh, families they don't use nappies for the baby because of the climate yes. so they they replace or even the mm. child sometimes is naked so mm. you know you basically mm. um uh, what you do you know like to to prevent uh, mm. any rashes <laughs> no 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 like yeah. uh, because the the child will pee the child mm. will have you know have to defecate so i was thinking like how you prevent if you don't put the nappy because of the climate you can't prevent it <laughs> obviously so it has to be done. done but there are like some uh, mats you know like you can put yeah you can put it. a plastic mat uh, under the sheet then the sheet and then, they, then maybe one or more two more three more rough sheets under the baby uh -huh. and uh, if you want to put baby without the diaper for 2 3 hours maybe 1 or 2 hours then it it's my it, it is possible that the baby can poop the baby can pee so it's <laughs> fine the it will happen the mess will okay. happen you cannot avoid it but at the yeah but at the end you have a help also with it yes yeah. yes you have the help Big, uh, the mothers are there anybody can help it's okay the fathers also can help in cleaning and uh, the massage lady the japa lady i was telling you about she has this work to uh, you know do the laundry of the baby uh -huh. she she does it oh, so okay. it's it's included in her work i thought yeah. uh, when you hire the nanny she yeah. does all of this except yeah. yeah you can call her the nanny but i in india we call her the massage lady the japa lady mm -hmm. so, so she comes for 45 days it's the 6 week uh, mark which we have after the postpartum so she comes for 45 days she lives with the uh, mother the newborn in the same room she sleeps with them and uh, in the morning she will give good massage to the baby she will give massage to the mother then she will take care of the laundry the whole of the nappies and lungots which the baby had from the last day she will clean everything she will clean the mother's clothes also because after the vaginal delivery there is a lot of you know bleeding yeah 
I had a C-section, so I didn't have that much of bleeding. I had a uh, bleeding in normal amount and it was, I was using pads. So there was nothing for me, but baby, yes, she does the laundry for the baby. Mm -hmm. And other than that, if you know, we have, um, we make japa laddus after the postpartum. So basically after delivery, the mother, she can't have anything spicy for more than 40, for around 45 days. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the food is uh, in such a way, the there has to be laddus, japa laddus, which Spicy. are made, yes. They are not not uh, necessarily sweet. Maybe uh, you can use jaggery also, not sugar. And uh, in a very, you know, limited amount, according to the taste of the mother, I asked my mom to make japa laddus or little, you know, not very much sweet because I can't eat that much sweet. Uh -huh. So they were in a very, you know, less than medium amount of sugar in it, jaggery uh -huh. in it. Sure. So the laddus, they are form of uh, all sorts of dry fruits and uh, you take, you have to consume it every twice a day. Uh -huh. Yeah, every day twice, maybe once or twice in a day according, what do you prefer? And the food, it should be, you know, less spicy. Are you talking about the vegetables? Yeah, everything has to be made in pure ghee in India. This is the, the this the, is the butter. Yeah, yeah, the the ghee. So basically, everything your parathas they are in ghee. A lot of ghee in them. The sabjis they are made in ghee only. Mm -hmm. If you are having any the laddus, they have a lot of ghee in it because we believe that the more nutritious, the more you know the food is that na, the, it will give you stamina, it will give you strength, you will feel it better. Yeah, you will feel it every day on a daily basis. When I was during my postpartum days, if any day I used to skip my laddu or I used to skip anything nutritious, I used to feel that my stamina was so low, I was so low on energy and I wanted, even my, my milk supply was low. So I, I used to, and the other day, then I used to have a lot of laddu and a lot of uh, nutritious food, nutritious food, then I was okay. The breast milk, it was in a good supply. And can you tell me, uh, mm -hmm. can you tell me if you, could you feel the care from the part of your husband? Because you say you stay with your, uh, sorry, with your uh, parents. In my bed, yeah. yeah, but what, in your opinion, like how web off and I mean, the husband takes yeah. part in it. So my husband, he used to live with me only in my room. So whenever he used to have a flight, he used to go and then after the flight, he used to join me again with me and the so baby. So you, you, you could feel the support from him? Yes, side. yes. During the first 45 days, two months, uh, when I was in a very fragile state, I was weak and I had a C-section, so I had stitches. So you can't walk so easily during the first initial 10-15 days. It's very difficult to walk with stitches. They are very painful. And uh, even the breastfeeding parts is very struggling. For It depends on everybody. But for me, the initial 7-8 days when the milk supply was low, uh, that time was it was really struggling for me. Uh, the nipples, they had cracks in them. So the baby, when the baby latches, you feel a lot of pain, you feel a lot of stretch. Like the baby wants more milk, but you can't give him the milk. So it's it's very struggling, even emotionally, even mentally, you feel like you are not able to give what you're supposed to give to the baby. So my husband used to, he used to live with me in my room only. So what husbands can do, see, it's, it's new for them also. It's new for us also, it's new for them also. So they don't know anything about the baby as we also don't know anything about the baby. The elders, they tell us that, you know, you it. yeah, the, if the baby is doing like this, you have to do it this way. If you, the baby does this, it means that he's hungry. If the baby does it, it means that he is, he wants to, you know, the diaper has to be changed. So, so the elders, they teach us everything. They tell us their experience. So both the mother and father, they have to be equally involved in everything. So what happened with me was, uh, Weber, my husband, he used to, uh, help me, you know, change the diapers. So basically what I did during my postpartum days was I used to feed the baby because I was uh, on, uh, I was feeding on demand. So I was not giving the bottle, the top feed formula you give the baby. I never give that to my baby. It, uh, only for the initial seven days when my milk supply was low. Uh -huh. Only those seven days I was giving the bottle milk. But other than that, I was completely breastfeeding the baby. So what my work was, 
I was feeding the baby and then I used to give the baby to the father and then he used to burp the baby and, and the he, yeah everything else I used to take a lot of rest a lot so of you rest. were basically yeah. in the bed or so I was you know. on my bed I used to wake up uh, I used to feed the baby and then I used to lie down again and also I was so I was lying down I was resting well and I used to only wake up when I used to feed the baby and that's it then the other all the other things they were, they were the taken baby. care of by the husband if he had any problem he used to tell my mother or my father or my brother it's just like a teamwork yeah it's a teamwork you need a village in India we say that to raise a baby, you, you need, need village. a village. So that's true. You can't. You, the baby thing. It was never supposed to be done alone. I don't know how women are doing it. I have no clue. How are they doing it alone? It's so difficult. It's mentally challenging. It's you. You're hormonally. You your body is like upside down. So everything changes after the pregnancy. You. It's very challenging mentally. You need people around. You need people who have positive outlook, who think positive for you, for the baby and stuff. So yeah, you have to have positive support. You need people to talk to because uh, my birth experience, it, it, I had a, a lot of birth trauma because I was expecting vaginal delivery, but it ended up happen. with the uh, emergency C-section. Almost normal and then emergency C-section. So I was not mentally prepared for it. So I had a lot of trauma. I had painful birth. I, I wanted to talk to someone that, you know, this happened to me. The more you talk, the more it's therapeutic. You need friends. You need, you know, if you have fellow mothers who are also your friend, that's also very, like, you know, it's okay. like the unpaid therapy session. I needed that support. I had everybody around. I was like, okay, they will take care of the baby. I need to take rest. If I wanted to talk to someone, I used to talk to someone. Yeah, it's and I wanted to ask if uh, you have so many people in the family and they are with you, but don't you feel sometimes that they're interfering too much? Like, don't you feel that you have these advices and... Or you will be like, oh my god, please, I mean, I, I am mother, I know better, you know what I mean? So this question, it's very subjective. It depends on what sort of equation you have with your family or your husband's family. So for me, I wanted people to interfere. <laughs> I wanted them to help because I had no clue about the baby. I was like, I will not interfere. I will just do my feeding and you do the rest. Mm -hmm. You tell me what to do because I had no knowledge. I had zero knowledge of how to take care of a baby. Basically what happens is during this time, you listen to the mother. What is she telling you? What is she? What does she expect of you? What does she wants from you? You need to you know you need to do what she says yeah, what are, you she is the priority the mother is the priority not the baby she is the priority she what she says you do it and mother in law mm -hmm. yes yeah, same goes to the mother in law also what she says what the mother is says you just do it if she wants you to interfere if you, if she wants you to do the things then you do it if she doesn't want you to interfere if she's like i will do it on my own it's my baby but because it at the end of the day, it's your motherly instincts. Yeah. The more the more you get connected to the baby, the more you will realize that you know if he is crying this way, I think he is hungry. Even if everybody else is saying no, no, he is not hungry. He just had so his you get to milk. Know. You will instantly you, you know you will have those motherly instincts that no, the baby is hungry. I know the baby is hungry. Initially, when my son used to cry, I had no idea why he was crying. Everybody else, but my mother, she knew. She knew that there are gas issues. They they are so common. Even I had the gas issue when I was baby. So she knew everything. What sort of things you have to apply? You have to apply heating on um, the baby's. You know this thing. What's it called? Navel. Uh -huh. Yeah. It has to be applied on the navel or you know maybe a little bit of warm cloth massage on the stomach or there are you know such home remedies you don't know it but it depends on every family what kind of equation you have if you don't like somebody then you know you can ask your husband that you know <laughs> just do whatever with them I don't want to see this person in front of me okay. so yeah it depends the husband is also there na? if if anything is related to the husband's family, you can ask the husband anytime. You know, I am not feeling comfortable with them and they are doing this or that. You just handle out the... 
Anyway, thank you so much for um, a big conversation, so much explanation, because even, as I say, um, we are a family at the end. Yeah. Uh, Varun is a very supportive person, very supportive partner, and uh, I really, really appreciate what is happening mm -hmm. around me, how I'm treated uh, during mm -hmm. this, um, you know, very important time, which is pregnancy, because from the pregnancy, mm -hmm. everything starts. How the partner treats you during the pregnancy, you can yes, really yes. relate how he will be treating you in the future, mm. how important you are. Mm. It's not about the baby, right? Mm. It's also about the women because you are at the end giving the mm. new life. Mm. And in my opinion, women also matters, not the new arrival, not the baby only, but mm. first of all, mm. your partner who is the person who just passed through so mm. much mm. just pregnancy, just postpartum mm. and the rest so I'm really happy about it, I'm happy that I have you mm. that Thank you're going to say for giving me this opportunity yeah. to talk explain. about it because I, I feel so much about this topic now. I, I made my own YouTube channel because I wanted to talk more about this, these things during the pregnancy, what happens to the woman after the pregnancy, what happens, how much help do you need so thank you so much thank for you us again. for <laughs> giving me <laughs> this <laughs> opportunity to talk about it and uh, I will be coming to meet you when your baby arrives thank and you, you are welcome <laughs> really because I, I will help you in yeah. whatever ways you want yeah because I want to experience that so, you know welcoming and hospitality yeah. from the family which I have right now so namaste and thank you so much